Good Monday, everybody. Welcome to Charting with Dan. I'm Dan, joined by Juan Harris. Hey. Juan, thanks for joining me today. I love to chart. Always uh, fun. If you're if you're watching in the United States, I hope you had a nice July 4th weekend. If you're watching us uh, elsewhere in the world, I hope you had a nice weekend just in general. It was still uh, July 4th. It was just there's nothing special about it. Yeah, that. exactly. It was, it was still the calendar month of July, yeah. uh, the 4th. It just uh, there's no uh, fireworks, you probably. Don't care. Yeah. Or uh, earthquakes, if you're from California. <laughs> yeah, geez. Your dogs uh, are safe. They're free. We had two. From it trauma. was fun. Uh, so so, Lon, Spider-Man, of course, we knew that would be oh, yeah. the story of the weekend, Spider-Man Far From Home. He's very far from home. Very far from home and very high up in the box office. We, uh, we don't put much uh, stock in tracking on the show, so a lot of the story was no. about, like, it, it exceeded its tracking numbers, yeah. which I think is just as notable as uh, them saying that Toy Story 4, it's weird how you see the difference in the coverage, because Toy Story 4, the tracking wasn't right, and they're like, what a disappointment. Right. And Spider-Man Far From Home, the tracking wasn't right, and they're like... Look at how great it's doing. It just yeah. means the number was wrong. Yeah, it's, it just, the, the number's it, wrong both times. Yeah, it's never <laughs> about how the movie's performing. It's always about how did we do in terms of guessing how well it was going to yes, do. And which who cares? It's not what you're supposed to do. We've been it's we've been through this before. <laughs> it's fine. We Moving don't on. have to go over this again. Moving on. Yeah. But Spider-Man Far From Home, the number one movie of the July 4th weekend, over $92 million for the over the Friday through Sunday period. Although it's not quite as easy as, as that with this movie, because Spider-Man Far From Home got a three-day jump on the weekend. It opened on Tuesday. So that $92 million, that's just what it made from Friday right. through Sunday. The that weekend. does not count its opening three days, which is a substantial chunk of change. As a matter of fact, its six-day gross is over $180 million. So wow. its opening weekend only represents about half of what it made uh, in its first six days. But we'll talk about all that right now, actually. <laughs> first of all, let's look at uh, where this July 4th weekend stands as far as other July 4th weekends historically at the domestic box office. Spider-Man Far From Home put in the second best uh, domestic performance for a film over the July 4th weekend behind Transformers Dark of the Moon, which wow. people forget a huge hit. Yeah, I, now that we're at the tail end of that franchise, we all kind of ingested how disappointing it is. We we don't think of those movies as being juggernauts, but right away when they first started, yeah. it was a massive hit. Yeah, so it was Dark of the Moon was a massive hit. Yeah. That is still the best performance for a film over That's July crazy. 4th. Weekend. I would not have guessed that. Yep, but. domestically. Uh, Far From Home comes in second, just ahead of Spider-Man 2, the second Sam Raimi movie, yeah. and then Desp Despicable Me 2. And Despicable Me 3. Now, the interesting thing about those movies is only Despicable Me 3 of those five movies opened on the Friday of the July 4th ah, weekend. Right. So all of those movies got a two- or three-day jump on that opening number, so they all made more money. July 4th is actually, it's kind of like, it's not exactly like Christmas, but it is, it is in the sense that it's more of a big week. Uh, right. Instead of a big weekend, the d the date of July Fourth, actually, when you think of it, is not a huge movie day because everybody's right. doing something else. That's what I was gonna say. Like Christmas, we think of like you have Christmas morning, yeah. and then by ten a.m., Christmas is sort of done, and a lot of families are like, "Well, we're all together, we're all here, let's go see a movie." But July Fourth is sort of defined by the things you're doing out of the movie. There, you're going to a barbecue, yeah. you're seeing some fireworks. Yeah, Christmas Eve and Christmas are actually the days you want to forget as far as movie going. It's all the days, particularly after, right, and and a little bit before that you're looking at. So July Fourth is another one where so people go on vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th there's competition beyond just the films. Your, your uh, water parks, water parks, anything really that you'd want to do. Uh, there's so many different activities, <laughs> uh, plus Stranger Things. And yeah, you gotta which watch. Which is what kept gotta, uh, us in the That's house what I was doing. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was also some competition. Uh, but you know, Lon, we don't just throw up some numbers. We also like to do some weird stuff. You know, people have been saying, like, you always talk about adjusted for inflation. Adjusted sure. for inflation, which I like to do on the show to give us a little perspective. It's like, why don't you ever talk about tickets sold? Well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Why don't we look at that? And that's actually a lot of this data, uh, Box Office Mojo, which is one of the sites that I use to pull a lot of data from, has a setting where you can look at tickets sold. So I figured, why not? Let's let's listen to some of the comments. And I always like a new experience. That's what you, they do when you go to the ball game. It is. They, they don't count. tell you how much money they made. They tell you how many tickets They sold. tell you how many butts are in seats. So let's yeah, look at yeah. the butts in seats number for July 4th. Uh, Spider-Man 2 for the July 4th weekend. Again, this is domestically by sure. estimated tickets sold. Spider-Man 2 actually holds the record with over 
over 14 million tickets sold estimated Transformers Dark of the Moon is second and then you've got the two best consecutive years in history for one movie star Will Smith <laughs> yeah, Independence wow. Day number three Men in Black number four and then Despicable Me 2 there at number there. five so if you look at just purely tickets sold you start to filter in some of that height of the 90s uh, July 4th being there's about a five year stretch where like July 4th was like the, the premiere yeah. release weekend for movies Independence Day also the marketing for that I, I think my pet theory has really changed movie marketing forever. Like yeah. the, the the original trailer or teaser of just the White House being destroyed, like it got people so hyped. And it was the first you'd heard about that movie was when you saw yes, that trailer. Yes, the Super Bowl. It, right. it, it was literally, for people that don't know, this, the, the first time most people had heard of Independence Day Almost was, anyone, really. There's a shot of the White House and it blows a up. A spaceship comes and hovers right <laughs> yeah. above it. A beam comes out and the White House just blows up. And it just says, enjoy the Super Bowl. Yeah. It may be your last. Independence Day. And you're like, like the greatest. What? Yeah, there are two times in my life where a trailer completely blew my mind. That one in Cloverfield. Yeah. It's like, what oh, is this? Cloverfield was like, what's going on? What? What? Who, is this who, Godzilla? People thought it was a Voltron movie because it's like they said it was a lion. Yeah. They said it was a lion. It's a Voltron <laughs> movie. Like, oh my god! Like people, dead, they lost their minds. Yeah. They didn't know what was going on. And and as good as movie marketing is today, and it's very sophisticated and great. But you can't. We're we're too savvy. We know too much. Yeah. And that you can't keep stuff from people like that anymore. No. No. It's tough. We, we, yeah. We're too. We're too so, yeah, on the internet. Now. Independence Day. Everyone was just so hyped to go yeah. that opening weekend. Like I waited in like a line for a couple hours. Yep. Yeah. It was fun. It was. Uh, Lon, I mentioned that Spider Man uh, Far From Home did open a few days in advance. So that's it makes it tracking difficult. I can't just put up the top whatever Spider Man opening weekends because they all had different release patterns. So one thing that I can can look at it again it's not an apples to apples comparison is six day grosses so spider-man far from home as of yesterday has been open for six days how does it stack up against the six opening days however they fell right. of the other spider-man films let's take a look at that if you're looking at six day grosses domestically spider-man far oh. from home actually has the top six day gross huh. of any film in the spider-man franchise although we'll talk about attendance in a second uh ahead of spider-man 2 spider-man 3 spider-man homecoming and uh sam raimi's original spider-man yes. movie i mean the, the one that you really can draw the most comparisons on if you want to is the fact that it's taken a pretty substantial jump ahead of Homecoming, the last Spider-Man film. Right. $30 million more in its opening six days. That's a good indication if you're Sony and to a, somewhat of an extent also Disney as far as keeping the character alive in the MCU. That audience interest for the character is growing and not waning, which is a, which is a good yeah. sign. That's a rare for this summer. It's got to be an ego hit if you're Andrew Garfield. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't get on there at all. The only Spider-Man not represented. Well, let's feed Andrew Garfield's ego just oh, a little Oh, good, bit, okay. Because let's look at the attendance through six days. I like it. For the Spider-Man franchise. And he just... He, oh, he gets uh, on there. Homecoming <laughs> just barely... Uh, just barely, barely behind The Amazing Spider-Man through right. his first six days. Now, Homecoming ended up selling more tickets because Amazing Spider-Man was a bit front-loaded. Right. Uh, but Andrew Garfield, yeah. Well, I think what you, obviously, we all know that this, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies were extraordinarily successful, and when you equalize it as far as money and attendance, they are going to come out on top. Yeah. But I think, again, if you're Sony and, and Marvel, what you like is that Spider-Man Far From Home, by a pretty large margin, is the first Spider-Man movie since Raimi's films through six days to sell 20 million tickets, which yeah. again, it's not just money, it's tickets. Uh, audiences are going to see this version of Spider-Man, and they're going to see it more than they saw the last Spider-Man movie, and you can't really ask for a whole lot more. Than no, that. I mean, the, the Raimi movies, too, they were coming out in a marketplace that was so much less crowded with this kind of material, especially mm -hmm. Spider-Man 1. But yeah. even by 2, there were not... 10 comic book films a year. If you were a huge fan of superhero movies, you were going to go see these because they were sort of the only game in town for a while. Yeah, I, I think, I think, yeah, true. <laughs> uh, I think with a lot of other uh, movies this summer, when we talk about their performance, we've had to add a lot of asterisks and pro provisos and if this and if that, and some people are calling it a disappointment, but I don't think it is, or this, or we'll look, look at the budget. Spider-Man Far From Home, one of the few movies that's open this weekend that I think we can just say, like, it did really good. That's it. Yeah. Don't have to don't have to qualify right. it or look at the budget or say look at it this way. Like no really no matter how you look at it, it did good. Again though, you look I mean it's 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 Sony, it's not Disney, but it's it's still MCU. I mean we're really seeing audiences are just 
they're 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 congealing around a few franchises and they're like, I will go see this and nothing else. Largely, although Aladdin, Al- we're going to yeah. talk about Aladdin well, in a second because uh, Aladdin yeah. is—they're they, still going to see Aladdin. Oh, those Disney live, some of the Disney live action remakes, S- not all, not all. But Dumbo, some. no. Aladdin, yes. Oh yeah, Who, I feel like Lion King is going to be on the. Yes I feel like side Aladdin. Well. Yeah, I, I mean, People Lion are pretty King. hyped. I agree. We got a couple weeks till that one. Uh, let's look at the rest of the top five. Toy Story four in the number two spot. It dropped a little bit over forty percent from last weekend. Still running ahead of Toy Story three's gross at this point in its run. Although likely if you were to adjust it for inflation they're running at about even mm-hmm. uh, but toy story 3 was a hugely successful movie so that's good for yeah. toy story 4 it has cracked the 300 million mark this weekend yesterday dropped about 40 percent we talked last week about how movies like yesterday tend to drop a little bit less week weekend to weekend because an older crowd generally goes to see them uh it stays in the number three slot uh, 10 million dollars it's now over 35 million dollars which for its budget isn't too terrible not a breakout hit but not yeah bad. I, one of the metrics that i keep in the back of my head with a movie like that is does suddenly you start hearing the band from the movie's music everywhere like if you think about Bohemian Rhapsody yes the week or two after that hit suddenly everybody's listening to Queen All songs Queen. again yes. and and that happens when you've got a movie like that that features prominently one band's music or whatever yeah. and this I don't feel like there's been any additional Beatles excitement recently around well, this movie. I mean, Queen is like arena rock too, a large, a lot of it. Beatles. And the Beatles is great, but it's not like, yeah, man, like you're not pumping your fist. I don't think I a lot like, of people like are doing that. Does not like you do the, to Queen. Not, not you know, they don't have "We Will Rock You" in their cat. Right, but. exactly. It's still great music, but I think it's yeah. also a different kind of music. It's true. I mean, I you know, I feel like with Rocket Man too. Like you, you suddenly it feels like those Elton John classics rebubble back to the surface. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It just I feel like yesterday's kind of flying under the radar. Interesting, yeah. Who knows? I mean, it's a very the, informal metric. It was a movie that I sort of had my eye on as the summer started to be like, that could be a movie, maybe, that comes out of its shell a little bit. And, yeah. And, but it's uh, if it really connected with with audiences, it's like I said, it's yeah. it's it's done well, but it hasn't really just popped and just yeah, hasn't come out of the gate like that. Uh, Lon, last week we talked about Annabelle Comes Home and mm-hmm. its opening and how the, 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 the bloom may be coming off the rose a little bit. And uh, this is the fun part about the box office is the next week a movie can come out and, and make you look kind of dumb. Because here's what <laughs> happened with Annabelle Comes Home. Uh, it stays in the top five. It's there at number four. It dropped about 53% from last week. Uh, first of all, for a horror movie, that's not a bad drop at all. Secondly, for the Conjuring franchise, that is the second best hold for any movie movie in hmm. its second weekend uh, in the Conjuring franchise, second only to the first Conjuring. It's sneaking up on the $50 million mark, so audiences may not have flocked out to see Annabelle Comes Home in the numbers that they did in the other Conjuring movies, but they also did not run away like they did from The Nun, so right. it seems like we're somewhere in the middle here. There you go. There you go. Conjuring that's, franchise. That's why, you, that's why you can kind of speculate, but you can't make a judgment on something until uh, Yeah, certainly outperforming out. uh, Child's Play. It is definitely outperforming Child's Play. <laughs> the other killer doll movie. Yes, the other killer doll <laughs> movie. But the, 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 the nice doll movie is still doing better mm. than the killer doll movie that's not the other killer doll movie. Just, uh, and Ugly Dolls was also this summer. Ugly Dolls so movies was... So what is was, going on with these dolls? The yes, spring. Also this summer. Let's talk about Aladdin. We keep talking about Aladdin, and the reason why is because it, it, keeps, keeps, showing it keeps showing up in the top five. <laughs> Aladdin has spent, this is its seventh consecutive week in the top five. It dropped again just 25% from last week, so its holds this summer have been really good. Uh, I, I I don't think after three or four or even five weeks, I was thinking like, well, maybe it's because a lot of the movies like Godzilla and Men in Black and Dark Phoenix haven't done well, so it's just kind of hung around because it's there. But if you look at the holds and the fact that it is still in the top five after seven weeks, that doesn't happen very often. I went back and, and looked at the looked at the charts. Uh, this is the first movie to spend seven consecutive weekends. Now, Captain Marvel spent more than seven weekends in the top five but it fell down the chart and, and came, came back, back up right. when avengers endgame came out it is the first movie to spend seven consecutive weekends in the top five since aquaman at the beginning of the year mm-hmm. this is the first summer movie to spend seven consecutive weekends in the top five since mission impossible rogue nation back in 2015 so wow. that's pretty impressive especially when you consider that rogue nation came out more toward the end, the of, end the summer, of the summer right so it's hanging out through like august, august the doldrums and, yeah. yeah the doldrums a little bit which is why i went back to look at may releases a movie that came out in may that has been that stayed in the top five for seven consecutive weeks and i had to look for a while and i eventually found the last movie to come out in may 
that spent seven consecutive weeks in the box office top five was Finding Nemo in 2003. That is shocking. So it has been 16 years since a movie crazy. that came out in May was in the top five for seven consecutive yeah. weeks. That's not just hanging out by attrition. That is a movie that, that families people go to and see people are just going to times. see over and over yeah. and over again. That's the only, honestly, the only way to do something like this is yeah. really families I mean, are going to see it a bunch of times. There have been bad summers. There have been summers where it's been a letdown. The movies still haven't done that. Right. Still, like There's something about Aladdin yeah, that I mean, it just keeps driving repeat business. If you come out in mid-May, and you're going to spend two months. That's your. That's like the whole summer. You're, yeah. you're basically surviving every new movie that comes out every week. And honestly, this is likely the last week that it's going to be in the top five. I there are so. there are two new movies that come out this weekend. You've got Spider Man that's going to hold over, and Toy Story Four is going to hold over, and you, we'll see what the other films do. So this is likely. We'll see. But you never know. <laughs> this is likely the last week in the. I don't know. I looked at. I skipped ahead, Dan. And well, no, we'll see. I don't know. It's not as unlikely as it may seem. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, but. I, I really do think again. You you have to you have to kind of tip your hat and say that Aladdin is doing something that it's that a movie hasn't done literally in, in 16 years. That that is impressive to hang around for that and, long. And, and the we talked the before five. about how how Will Smith used to like rule the summer box office. This this is a huge hit for him. Like he hasn't yeah. had a massive breakthrough like this in a, a while. A mega hit like this, yeah. no, in, in in a really long time. So Aladdin hanging around and then not in the top five was Midsummer. From Ari Aster, uh, it took the number six spot for the weekend, six point three million dollars. It's made just over ten point nine since it opened on July third. Uh, we were talking about the cinema score for the movie and how it was better than the one that Hereditary got. Mm -hmm. uh, I think part of that may be due to the fact that Hereditary opened to thirteen point five million dollars just over three days. So it's made it made more in three days than Midsummer's made in five days. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think part of the reason why the cinema score was higher on Midsummer may have been that it drew a smaller audience that perhaps was more prepared yes. for what they were about to get, whereas Hereditary cast a much right. wider net. I think among horror fans, the word got out that, like, this is not a conventional horror movie. Yeah. It's more of a niche thing, and so you had less confused people who didn't know what they were getting. Yeah, so it, it does seem like Midsummer did not quite capture the horror zeitgeist or even the buzz quite as much as Hereditary did, but given the reaction to hereditary with a general audience i don't think that's incredibly surprising plus it's just not i, I did not find it to be as accessible as hereditary uh, and hereditary is a very dense yeah, movie well, to not, begin with. not a not hugely accessible right, <laughs> right. so i yeah. i i i i liked midsummer uh, but <laughs> it's not. It's, it's it's a very. I'm still. Yeah. yeah I got to see it again. It's one of those movies you're just gonna visit and revisit and it's, figure it's, it out later. I mean, you know, the the, the convention of wisdom used to be the open stuff like that over the summer. It's like, well, it's counter programming people who aren't into Spider Man or whatever. They're gonna they want something to go see. But yeah. I don't know about horror as counter. Horror feels like programming. It doesn't feel like counter. Well, yeah, it's it's the idea of counter programming sort of going by the wayside. Right. Uh, as we. But usually, like yesterday, to me, feels like okay. That's a, you're going for an audience that's not yeah. going to be as into the main stuff that's out. It's like an older audience. They love Beatles songs. Maybe. Yes. Yes. But like Midsommar is kind of still going for the same people that go see, you know. In theory. Uh, yes. Uh, a main Spider -Man. Spider Man movie yeah. or whatever. Uh, well, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Ari Aster. He, uh, I, I still love his movies. I so. think he, yeah. I mean, it's like it's a twenty four. It's gonna he's gonna get to keep making them. It's it's gonna last. The people will watch it on VOD. This is hardly the last critically acclaimed inaccessible horror movie that a twenty four. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's like, like twice a year for them. <laughs> like this is high life just again. Yeah, this is how it works. Yeah. Let's look at the top per theater average. It was Spider-Man. Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, just under $20,000 from 4,634 theaters. The second place was a documentary about uh, Leonard Cohen hmm. called Marion and Leonard Words of Love. Uh, that was about $11,000 per theater, but uh, almost doubled up by Spider-Man. Yeah. That was only in four theaters. Spider-Man was in over 4,000 theaters. So Leonard Cohen, not quite the draw of Peter Parker. Not quite the draw that you get from, from Flash Thompson and our friend of the show, Tony <laughs> Revolori, yeah. and, and, and gang. I'm just going to say it's his movie. It's, it's, it's a Tony Revolori vehicle. It's a Tony Revolori vehicle is what I consider I far from home. Agree. Let's leave the United States. Uh, not not actually one. Uh, you know, I do have several warrants. So um, th that's why you're here. 
we hide you <laughs> yeah, and shelter you. Right. Uh, this, is, this is the embassy. This uh, isn't a real beard. <laughs> let's go worldwide and see what happened in the world. It was Spider-Man. It was again, it was <laughs> Spider-Man. Uh, far oh, from that home. international poster is gross. <laughs> that is, yeah. It makes, yeah, the international poster, yeah. they just like people. I, I do like that they made Spider-Man do what they usually make Black Widow do on a poster, right, it, which it, is like, which is like, arch your back, like, kind of show your butt and look yeah, over your it's shoulder. A, it's a Tom Holland cheesecake image. Uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate that they're just making that uh, applicable applicable to all of their superheroes, which is which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, Spider-Man: Far From Home, three hundred thirty million dollars worldwide. Keep in mind that it got a big jump on the worldwide box office last weekend, and uh, in some Asian markets, including China, where it made over hundred million dollars. So it is now open in almost every. World, major worldwide market. Toy Story free, 3, uh, sorry, 4. I keep People keep telling me, and they're right, I keep calling Toy Story 4 <laughs> alternately either Toy Story 2 or Toy Story 3. It seems like too many Toy Stories. Here's what happens <laughs> is we live, I live in a world where there's a sequel to a Toy Story movie and then it's, it's the only sequel for like 10 years. So there was like six, like nine years after Toy Story 2 yeah. when it was the last Toy Story movie and then it was Toy Story 3. And then there's another nine between three and four. So when I think about the last Toy Story movie in my head, I'm battling two other movies that for almost yeah. a decade of my life, I considered to be the final Toy Story movie. Yeah. So I apologize. It's like the right and the wrong date on the check. It'll just take a little it's while. Good we'll to get that, there. that four will click in there. Toy Story 4, it's also hard to say. Yeah. Toy Story 4 brought in another $75 million in second place. It opens in Japan this weekend, and then uh, it's rolling out into several other European markets over the next several weeks. So that might be a little bit more of a slow burn in some major markets. At number three is a movie that opened only in China. Sometimes we see this, yep. where a movie hits huge in China. It was probably a good idea that Spider-Man opened last weekend, because this took a right. huge chunk of the market. Uh, the White Storm 2, Drug Lords. Uh, it, is a Hong, it is a Hong Kong film. It opened in China this week. It is a sequel to a movie that came out in 2013 called The White Storm. However, it is a sequel pretty much in name only. Oh. Different plot, different characters. It's produced by and stars Andy Lau, oh, who is a huge, yeah, huge star. He's the Hugh Jackman of yeah. Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Multi-talented, does he's it great. all. Producing, great, singing, yeah. acting, you name it. Uh, he's the producer and star of the movie. Uh, that, uh, yeah. Big, big, big opening and big sure. China yeah. this weekend. Uh, it's going to make its U.S. debut this weekend at the New York Asian Film Festival. It's the closing oh, cool. film here in the U.S. So I hope that's one of those they get on Netflix or whatever so I can check yeah, it out. Yeah, it'll probably have yeah. a limited release, but it could be like <laughs> The Wandering Earth, which is on Netflix which right, you can now? See right now that may get a, a limited release on Netflix. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, White Storm 2, it's weird. It's, it, it is a sequel, but not really, and it's almost they're just recruiting new, new talent. Uh, yeah. well, Louis Ku came back, who was... Uh, in the last movie, he's like the only returning uh, actor and playing a different character. So it's basically oh, a new movie. So it's like, yeah, almost the anthology yeah. style. Like, yeah, oh, that's kind of cool. So it's I like think two white, two storm. Yes, two white, two storm. And I think using Andy Lau, <laughs> I mean, get a get, get star power attached to a movie. Yeah, there you I go. Mean, people go that. Uh, so that was number three worldwide, based just how it did in China. Uh, Annabelle comes home at number four, fourth place. It's got a last push this weekend. It's opening in several more major markets overseas this weekend. And then The Secret Life of Pets 2 at number five. It opened in several markets, including China, mm -hmm. this, this past weekend. And uh, it's uh, got a couple more left to go. But that's at number five. Aladdin did depart the top five worldwide. Mm. However, let's look at how it's doing. Let's look at the 2019 worldwide chart because Aladdin has zoom we were talking about it when it was in the 800s well yeah. that's left the 800s way behind it it is zooming up uh, closing in on that coveted one billion dollar mark yeah look at what a terrible year disney is having <laughs> uh in game at 2.7 billion captain marvel at 1.1 billion aladdin closing in on 1 billion toy story 4 now one of the top five movies uh, it's closing in on 700 million spider-man far from home will be a top five movie next weekend even though it's not a disney movie it's a sony movie it is one it's of the MCU. characters yeah, yeah. We're going to have Disney-related characters in the top five global films of 2019, probably by next weekend or two weeks from now. Watch your ass, Wandering Earth. Yeah, Wandering Earth, coming for you. Wandering Earth is going down. Yeah. It will depart the top five. Uh, I but, mean, Frozen 2 also just. And the Lion King. Lion King, jeez. And Star Wars. Uh, there's just no break. It's crazy. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. Okay, Shazam <laughs> drops out of the top ten. Sorry, Shazam. A cute movie. I really like it. As a matter of fact, it's just a bad week all around for Shazam because let's take a look at the top 10 2019 <laughs> movies and fate, fate would have it that Shazam also drops out of the top 10 for 2019. 
domestically here in the U.S. Endgame, Captain Marvel, Aladdin. Again, look at that uh, terrible year. Top four movies for Disney. Yeah. Spider-Man Far From Home enters the list at number five. That's not bad. I don't know why I yelled enters, but enters. It's, it's very exciting. I get they excited by entrance. number four. Yeah. Uh, us, John Wick, How to Train Your Dragon, Pokemon, all dropping down a, a slot. Secret Life of Pets 2 stays at number 10. Shazam drops out under Secret Life of Pets 2. And since we're talking about charts that Spider-Man 2 has entered in its first weekend <laughs> domestically, let's look at the summer movie report where it enters at number three. Wow. Again, three Disney movies. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the top three. Although Aladdin, it looks like, is going to be giving up that crown to Toy Story 4 probably this week. Uh, we're going to see a changing of the guard at number one. Aladdin will get bumped down to number two. John Wick, Pokemon, everything else moves down a spot to make room for Spider-Man, which drops Ma out of the top no, ten and puts boy. Dark Phoenix in the Danger Zone. Lion King <laughs> opening weekend yeah. memorial spot that is going to drop them out of the top ten. So Dark Phoenix will not be a top ten movie. Sorry. Men in Black International won't be either, let's no, be honest. No. And then Rocket Man and the rest, we'll see how everything falls. You never know what's going to happen in August. We've got Hobbs and Shaw. We've got Lion King some, still. Some stuff some surprises still yeah, that yeah. could come out. So starting to sort of crystallize in the tiniest bit kind of what the top ten for the summer is going to be. But there's a lot still to go uh we have to look at this this is like watching curling really, <laughs> yeah at it's, this point. it's inching inching forward it's like watching the world's longest lowest stakes marathon let's look at avatar and then avengers endgame see how they're so doing so close and yet so far so close uh, avatar now a mere 15.5 million dollars ahead of avengers endgame for the all-time global record as it crawls its way. I feel like I cursed myself because when Avengers opened, when Endgame opened, I said, like, I don't know if it's going to make Avatars. I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be really close. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like Ooh, a monkey's paw curse. Too close. Uh, yeah, too close, too furious. We're just... It's 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 literally like watching uh, paint dry. Who's still going... It's going to be on Blu-ray soon, guys. <laughs> it only needs 50... Out of $2.7 billion, dollars, it only needs 15 million more. I know. Can they... Can Disney... But still, I feel like every, if you, even if you loved it, you've seen it eight times now and you're kind of done. Need, need a little... Need a little time to regroup. I the, would think. The, the question is if Disney can shake the world's couch cushions loose. <laughs> right, yeah. It's like a to whole, find 15 million more down. dollars uh, out of the planet to add to Avengers Endgame. They're going to call it the number one movie of all time. No matter they what. will. It'll And they'll figure out. They'll, they'll do, do it. some creative figuring out calculation. It, it'll get another re release or yeah, something later on. But it's, it. it's just so close. It's, it, it's. I wish it was further away because then I could stop tracking it. But it's, but it's yeah. so close, I, I feel like I have to. I've been doing it since April, so at this point, I'm just pot committed. And <laughs> right, I have to keep yeah. doing it until somebody week wins or week. doesn't win. So $15 million, that's the difference this week. We will continue to update you as uh, Endgame Watch continues mm -hmm. here on Charting with Dan. So, Juan, there are two movies that are opening this week. We have Crawl from <laughs> Paramount, which is uh, director Sleep. Alexandra Aha. Yes. Aha, uh -huh, Aja, Aha. Uh -huh. I, I, I want to uh -huh. say it's Aha, uh -huh, but that sounds weird. I don't know. Uh, he directed... It's a J, A-J-A. -A. Uh, yeah, A-J-A -A directed films like Horns and The Hills Have Eyes yeah. and Piranha 3D, which mm -hmm. I know a lot of horror fans is like a cult favorite for I enjoy that one. He, I believe, was his debut High Tension? Is he that guy? I don't know. I think it is. I'm going to look it up. That's a good question. I wrote down his. I wrote down the notables, the ones that I Yeah, recognize. well, Hills Have Eyes, and I think there's that one, The Ruins, that's him, too. Uh, well, that that is the uh, Sam Raimi is the name they're throwing on the posters, because Sam Raimi's a producer. Right. That I'm gonna film, look, I'm it's gonna about this up. alligators. Yes, it's a, killer, it's a killer alligator movie. And then from Fox. Yeah, slash, High Tension. That, that was his there debut. We go. And Mirrors. He also did that one, Mirrors. There we go. Is that with Keith or Sutherland? Yes. Keith or Sutherland. I remember that one. Uh, in that, I remember it existed. Uh, coming from Fox Disney, but just apparently he officially He Fox. didn't do the ruins. He did He did one called The Pyramid that I'm getting it mixed up with. Well, how could you mix up your ruins and your pyramid? I know. It was a totally different ruin. Coming from Fox Disney is Stuber, starring Kumail Nanjiani and Dave Bautista. I've heard great things. I've heard, I know people who've seen it who loved it and thought it was hilarious. I feel like there's something weird with the marketing on this one. Well, yeah, it's a terrible title. 
It's a bad title. It's an awful title. I agree with that. I, I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm not getting hilarious vibes off it, even though I really like those two guys. Well. And I've heard uh, from other people who've seen it that it's funny. I wanna, I'm going to do a review of it uh, later this week, I think. Yeah, we don't need uh, to jump uh, ahead. But uh, I will say uh, I'm a big fan of both Kamel Nanjiani and Dave Bautista. And the movie is produced by Jonathan uh, Goldstein and John Francis Daly. Who did Game who Night. Did Game Night. And if you know how I felt about Game Night, then that might give you a clue about what yeah. I thought about Stuber. Um, I liked I like to promote movies that I enjoy and that I think pi- people might overlook. So you might see a review for Stuber later this week because um, I just hate saying that name. Stuber? Stuber. Yeah, no, it doesn't really cap. Like, I get it that his name is Stu and he drives an Uber, but it doesn't right. really capture that. It's just... It just is like a... Ra- it sounds like it's somebody's name. Like, yeah. It's like, meet... Frank Stuber, he's yeah. a cop. Like that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, I don't, I don't. It, it, it reminds me of the, I forget his name, but Longshot was named the name. Of, yeah, right. Of, Flark, Flargin, or Flarkin, yeah, whatever. Or whatever. It's <laughs> yeah, like, uh, Flarsky, I think. Fla- yeah, that's it's just Flarsky. like don't name it Flarsky. I feel yeah. like I feel like somebody should have said don't name it Stuber. Just, yeah. just don't. Well, also, I'm gonna I'm gonna reveal the thing that you told me that I didn't realize from the marketing is that uh, Batista's character can't see. <laughs> That's like part of the bit. That's not a spoiler. He's not like actually like blind. But he just had like an eye exam. Yes, part of it is that he's struggling with his sight in the movie. That sounds very funny, and that's not clear from the trailer. Um, Not clear at all from the trailer. Anyway. Why would you leave that out? Anyway. Stay tuned for more Stuber Talk here (laughs) on Phantom Entertainment. That's the new name of this show. It's just Stuber Talk. Maybe we'll be sitting here a week from today, Lon, talking about how Stuber is that breakout hit that nobody saw coming this summer in 2019. I don't know. We'll see. Who knows? I, I'm, I'm going to say maybe. <laughs> oh, okay. But we'll see. Can it overcome the name Stuber? We'll find yeah. out. Lon, thank you for joining me. Always a pleasure to be here and talk about Stuber. And thank you for watching. We will be talking about Stuber next week, as well as Crawl, uh, everything that opened at the box office. Uh, we'll continue to track Spider-Man and Toy Story and watch the uh, world's lowest stakes marathon <laughs> uh, of Avatar and Avengers Endgame, as well as anything else that might pop up. Who knows? Something crazy might pop off in China next week. I love talking about movies that I didn't see coming that just do huge in China, because then yeah. you get your next one. Wandering Earths and stuff like that. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.